Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Saloni and today I have with me Vaishnavi, an amazing student from our academy who has agreed to take time out of her busy schedule to share the journey that she's had so far as an SMM. Thank you so much Vaishnavi for joining us today. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for the course first of all. Thank you. Thank you. Means a lot to me. So Vaishnavi, uh, for people who are watching you for the very first time, if it would be great if you could give us a quick introduction. So I am Vaishnavi, social media manager. I'm based out of Hyderabad and I joined HPA in 2021, like mid 2021, around June or July. And uh, at that time, I was into full time corporate job uh, into software. And then uh, within like three to four months of joining HPA, I quit that and I got full time into freelancing. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing. So, uh, Vaishnavi, you are an engineer and you were working in the software field also. And social media is a completely different space, right? So, what was the motivation behind this transition? What got you excited about SMM? So, firstly, I didn't know anything about freelancing or social media or anything. But when I was in second year of my college, I started my own YouTube channel uh, named Artistica. It was a drawing channel. Yeah. So yes. that grew to 80k subscribers oh. and uh, I also uh, started another YouTube channel. My dad is basically a tailor. So we started uploading uh, uh, stitching content that oh. grew to 200k subscribers. Oh. I'm not actively publishing these, but uh, when I first uh, got to know about uh, HPA, I, I, this, this thing didn't come into my mind that I can convert whatever I have uh, done so far into a career option. But I got really fascinated by the interview that I saw of Mansi Chowdhury in uh, yeah. YouTube. And then I immediately did not join, but I started consuming a lot of content. And then I booked a call with one of your team members. And I think at the same day I joined after booking the call. Yeah. Uh, what fascinated me is uh, like converting something that I didn't know can like my own skill set into a profitable skill set. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool that you have scaled so many YouTube channels. Of course, uh, you were meant to be a social media manager. Like somebody with that level of skill set is just amazing. So, um, Vashni, could you give us a little bit of an idea for beginners who are watching this? What exactly does an SMM do? Like what are your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Uh, so, social media manager, we can choose any platform. Currently, though I have a good portfolio on YouTube, I'm currently focusing on LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, so day to day looks like um, like one to two hours of my day goes into getting new clients. Mm. Client acquisition is one of the biggest tasks. This is like backbone. Uh, the keep business keeps going if this is active. Uh, yes. This includes uh, being active on social media and also uh, reaching out to uh, people that don't know us, but we like them. And then also providing good service to the existing clients so that we get uh, referrals. So client acquisition is the top one that I would say. And then uh, next comes uh, our skill set, the deliverables that we have. We just need to offer the best quality of service possible. Uh, yeah. As much as acquisition is important, retention is like even more important. Yes. So the second thing is offering the best quality of service, be it graphics, content, or timely publishing, or the strategy that we develop. So these two are the major pillars for me so far. Yeah, 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 that makes so much sense. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you still focus on the first one. Because what yeah. happens is, you know, when uh, freelancers uh, start getting a lot of clients and work, somehow their own uh, business, you know, takes a backseat. Yeah, but it's, it it's happened, great. It happened yeah. to me that I uh, just came back to what, like, I started uh, acquisition again. Yeah, that is important. I remember being in that position myself also. You get very like, oh, I have worked with no worries. Yeah. And, you, know, you completely forget about that part of the Thank work. You. Awesome. Uh, so, Vaishnavi, um, uh, you know, one challenge is that a lot of people love spending time on social media. Yes, they do. And they want to become an SMM also. They want, they are interested. But one thing that worries them a lot is, will anybody hire me? Will I ever find clients, right? That is a big uh, roadblock mm -hmm. that a lot of people have. So, could you share your journey of how did you find your first client and what is the process? So, the first client will be the major win. Uh, the first client that I got was from HPA. So I was just randomly scrolling in the Facebook group of HPA and then there was a post of uh, someone looking for a content writer. I actually didn't start out as a social media manager and I didn't start as content writer also. Oh. Like I just saw that post and thought of giving it a try. And then that's how uh, I started becoming a content writer and then started 
uh, creating my own profiles and publishing, uh, promoting my own services. So first client that came from HPA was of like 2000 bucks. I, I got 2000 INR of payment for about two days of work. I wrote articles and uh, talking about getting clients outside HPA, I got it from Facebook group. Hmm. Uh, using the same strategies, the exact strategies that were thought inside HPA. So it was like, a, and uh, it was an international client. She was from Australia and uh, she was a business coach for artists. So like I just uh, pitched her, like I did everything that was taught inside HPA. And then we got on a call and she worked with me. She started work with me and she signed a three month contract uh, mm-hmm. uh, directly. Uh, so that was like a very, very big win. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, uh, they, like uh, people worry thinking, will anyone hire me or not? But there is a set of people who will not think about you, set of people who will consider. So yeah. we need to keep marketing, marketing, and still even the best people on the industry, in the industry right now will have, will uh, hear rejections. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, rejection is a part of life. Yeah, when, yeah. You apply for full, when you apply for full-time jobs also, you all keep hearing, yeah. things all, uh, you know, very yeah. often. So this is just a part of life. And yeah. just because you hear a no does not mean you are a bad freelancer. Mm-hmm. It could also mean that they were looking for something else. There are yeah. so many reasons for it. You have to keep exactly. going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's- yeah I, these were the exact words that I got from you in one of the weekly Q&A calls. Like I came to you and said that, uh, like I'm nobody saying yes. I'm reaching out to like hundreds of people, and you you were like um, uh, there could be hundred reasons. Maybe they don't need you right now. You need to reach out until you find a person who is actually in need of social media manager. So these are the exact words I'm hearing from you again. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. Like lovely. Uh, so basically, I think uh, a lot of people are worried about uh, you know they want to start uh, uh, social mm-hmm. media management or any type of freelancing. First, as a side hustle, you know, because they don't want to immediately quit their job, etc. So uh, when when they are uh, when they do that, they are often worried about time management. Like, how will I do both, right? Because already my work is so taxing, and you are somebody who did uh, both for some yeah. time at least. So, um, what are some of the things they can keep in mind uh, with respect to time management? So for me, because I was in a corporate job, I got two days a week uh, that I can concentrate on work. But during the weekdays, I really used to get drained out. So I just concentrated only on the weekends. Uh, it is, we need to make certain compromises. Like we should redu- uh, reduce the time spent on social media for scrolling or something. We need to find out the places where we are wasting time. Mm. And then just, uh, and we need to be strategic about it. Like we should have a to-do list. We shouldn't waste time even thinking about what to do and all of that. Just have everything streamlined. And even if we can uh, take out like two hours a day and a one full day during the weekends, it, it, it is very much doable. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of time. You can actually do a yeah. lot in just that amount of uh, energy. Yeah, totally. And also if the work increases, uh, if we start getting more and more clients, we can also onboard some newbie interns and just multiply our time by having team. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Totally agreed. And that's such a uh, underrated strategy. A lot of people are very uh, scared to take that step, you know, initially, but uh, it's actually uh, something that a lot of successful freelancers do because it yeah. really helps you, you know, serve uh, more clients with even with a limited amount of time. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's a great tip. Uh, so Vaishnavi, where is your business now? Like what kind of clients are you working with? And, uh, you know, th- how are you enjoying this whole process? So currently I'm working with coaches that the clients that have been had so far were coaches, but recently I made a shift to helping real estate agents. So somehow I got uh, to work with one of my clients who was a real estate agent. So I liked the work and I also understood the importance of social media for real estate agents. Mm. So now I totally shifted my niche. So the existing clients that I have are coaches like before I turned like shifted my niche I got this client but currently I'm targeting real estate agents and moving forward I want to convert this uh, freelancing into an agency model where I have a team uh, and uh, a good set of clients just uh, that's the biggest goal that I have for the next couple so cool yeah that's amazing Uh, and real estate is a great niche there's a lot of demand for it as well yeah yeah, and also real estate agents can benefit a lot from uh, content. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, more than uh, uh, like ads and all of that. This organic content marketing helps them build a community. Like I understood the gap 
like they are not present on social media and many social media managers are not helping them yeah so i thought of just uh, getting into it and working on it so i hope i i am also working with one of the coaches like who, she was also part of hpa she is mansi yeah. chowdhury like i mentioned yeah, yeah. yes so she i am uh, working with her to convert this freelancing into an agency model wow that's so cool yeah mansi is amazing she was one of our very early students yeah. and her success makes me so happy as as much as your success ma- makes me happy awesome so uh, vaishnavi um, uh, one uh, thing that a lot of people want to know in this uh, world is you know how much can a person realistically earn right so what kind of income numbers should people keep in mind as a goal when they start out on this journey because um, you know on social media we see things like people buying bmw audi and you know a 1 crore etc and i keep saying that this is not realistic and that's not the expectation with which you should come into the industry but realistically what kind of income is possible for smms So firstly honestly I did not uh, come across the stories where people are making crores and BMWs because all the people that I'm surrounded by are like realistic social media managers like majority of them are from HPA that's amazing so I really never heard of stories where people are like becoming millionaires or just buying good stuff so coming to the realistic expectations this is one of the biggest questions that I get asked in my DMs also uh my answer is like you can expect 15 to 30000 in first 3 months mm. and then uh, uh, if you can provide them the good service if you can refine yourself then you can expect scaling it to a lakh yeah and once if you know the strategies of hitting a lakh then the upper bound is like you can multiply it uh, by increasing the team you yeah. can also reach 2 lakh 3 lakh it, the time is not a constraint now yeah so the only thing is your skill set the deliverables that you offer the transformation that you offer to your clients that majorly decides the uh, uh, growth of the freelancing career but initially you can expect like 15 30000 in first 3 months because as beginners nobody will be interested to invest in us we need to just uh, work hard to prove them that we are worth the investment exactly exactly that's such a, that's extremely true and you have given a very realistic picture that you know mm-hmm. if you are just starting out within 3 months don't expect to reach a lack mm-hmm. of income because mm-hmm. that's not realistic but yes if you put in the effort 15 30000 uh, mm-hmm. even 50000 has uh, has happened yeah. for people in hpa but it all depends on the kind of you know uh, work hard work mm-hmm. and effort that you put in so that's great so vishnu one last question i want to ask is you know you have worked with both uh, indian and international clients right mm-hmm. so uh, have you felt any kind of a difference in uh, working with indian and international clients a lot of people are scared of working with international clients thinking about you know time difference expectation communication etc no difference honestly no difference there is no difference at all uh, i have had good set of good, uh, bad experience with both the people and a uh, very uh, good experience with both the people Yeah. Uh, and coming to time everybody is so understanding to book a call or talk to us within the times that we send like in my contract i have the working hours also so everybody till date uh, never asked for a slot outside that uh, time so yeah. no difference and uh, coming to the payment also uh, pay parity is something that we need to consider we cannot expect indian clients to pay as much as international people pay correct so uh they are paying on time everything is like no difference yeah no difference at all that's what i keep telling people also a lot of people try to run after international clients because you know somehow there is this image that has been created where you know people uh, believe that you know international clients are better paying in international clients have uh, better work environment all of that see but i i have worked with also indian and international clients and if you find good indian clients you your experience is just as good even with indians yeah. you know there are yeah. amazing indians who are excited to work with uh, you know, freelancers so there's really no difference of course there are good and bad people everywhere and yeah. we have to be okay with that it's about the person that may be not about the nationality awesome awesome so vaishnavi there are a lot of people who can, who are uh, thinking of uh, joining hpa and you know they are confused so they keep telling me that it would be great if you can uh, give me a uh, real experience from somebody who is from the academy instead of it coming from me so uh, to people who want to join to them do you have a message okay firstly i would thank my old self for taking this decision even i was so uh, doubtful about it but uh, after watching the videos uh, and other youtube videos of yours 
I just got to in, got into it. I would like to thank myself for that and also you. Uh, whoever is looking to join HPA, the, now I see that there are many parts inside HPA, like every skill has a separate course. I took the entire one side hustle formula. Like I highly recommend that because mentorship program, mentor, mentorship is really very, very much important. Like we get a lot of doubts in middle. The weekly q and calls were just amazing. The best part of HPA were weekly q and calls. I used to make a list of all questions and then just drop them in the calls. Uh, so mentorship program is something that I highly, highly recommend. And if you can put in the work, uh, the results are just going to happen in three to four months. Yeah. It's the execution, knowledge is there, roadmap is there, and also someone to guide us is also there. Execution is that if they if uh, they are committed to with the execution, then they should never give a second thought about investing or not. Wow, that's so sweet. Thank you so much, Vaishnavi. And thank you so much. I know you are a busy freelancer with a lot of work, but you still yeah. uh, took out time to uh, share your journey with the beginners who are listening to us. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate this. Yeah, I feel grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Vaishnavi's social media is linked below. Do consider uh, following her content. She creates amazing content. Do check it out. And I will see you in the next interview. Bye. Thank you. Bye.